Hello everyone, this is Peter Svidler for Chess24 recording a highlight video for round 4 of the uh, Tata Steel tournament in Vaikanze. And uh, for this video I've chosen uh, once again uh, a game by the world champion Magnus Carlsen, who in that round played white against the, the promising Chinese youngster Wei Yi, who has been uh, around for a while. Uh, and uh, he's obviously a very, very interesting player, and uh, I'm pretty sure they will play a lot, a lot more games in the future. And uh, let's uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Let's go for uh, let's go for the game there. Magnus, as usual, starts with e4, to which uh, Wei Yi replied e5. And already here, Magnus sidestepped what he <laughs> generally likes to do uh, and decided not to play knight of three. Uh, we can safely assume this is because uh, Wei Yi is a prominent uh, Petrov player, one of the very few uh, people at the top level who are still playing the Petrov, not because the opening has been refuted, but because uh, chess fashion is a fickle thing and it seems like uh, uh, the Berlin is the opening of choice uh, for people who want to play uh, solidly with black. Instead of this, Magnus played bishop c4, which is a well well known way of avoiding the Petrov and uh, shifting the game towards normally the, the Joko Piano, because uh, most people in this position either opt for uh, a very forced line starting with c6 and, c6 and d5, or if they decide not to do that, they just play uh, knight c6, knight of 3 and bishop c5, transposing to, to the Joko Piano, which uh, features very largely, I think, in most people's white's repertoires these days, and Magnus played this position in his match against Karekin uh, in great many games. C6, as mentioned, is the, the main move in this position, but after knight f3, Wei Yi has done uh, something which I personally haven't seen before, and uh, uh, it is somewhat rare. Uh, normally people play d5, and in fact Magnus has uh, negative experience uh, with this line. His game against Fabiano Caruana in the St. Louis tournament in 2014 continued bishop b3, bishop b4 check, a very typical move here, uh, trying to stop the knight from getting to the c3 square. Uh, c3, bishop d6, bishop g5, takes, takes h6, and he, he ended up uh, losing this position to, to Fabiano. He doesn't lose very many games with white, so I'm sure he remembered this one. But Wei Yi instead played d7, d6, uh, aiming to, uh, to get uh, positions which I think more similar to the, uh, the Spanish than they are to the Italian, because the bishop doesn't get out to, to c5. Castles, bishop b7, bishop b7, castles, c3. Uh, knight bd7, rook e1, knight c5, bishop c2, all very logical, and in particular bishop c5 I think signaled exactly the plan that uh, Wei Yi tried to realize uh, further down the stretch in this game, because instead of knight c5 you could make an argument for just playing slowly with rook e8, let's say, uh, knight bd2, bishop f8, knight f1, you could, you could maybe even play g6, bishop g7 here, and what you get is <clears throat> a position very similar to what you would get, for instance, in uh, in the Brea variation of the Spanish, but with the pawn still on b7, which could be both an advantage and a disadvantage for black, because there are no targets for white to attack on the queen side, but on the other hand, the bishop on c8 feels a bit, uh, feels a bit uh, uninvolved in the action. And to solve that particular problem, uh, black plays knight c5, uh, bishop c2, bishop g4. Uh, the general rule of thumb is uh, developing the bishop to g4 uh, in positions where white uh, has not played d2, g4 and uh, instead put the pawn on g3 is not considered to be the most critical uh, approach and is in, in many cases frowned upon because the bishop could get somewhat marooned on g6 later in the game or at least uh, white definitely has the option of trading it for one of his knights. But the plan that Wei went for in this game is also quite well known from some quiet uh, Spanish variations. In particular, uh, you can uh, talk about the variation, which I think Nigel Short played uh, on occasion. a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castles, bishop e7, and then rook e1, d6. And here, uh, black will often play uh, bishop g4 later, followed by knight d7, and you will see a very similar uh, type of setup from Wei Yi today. Bishop g4, knight bd2, knight e6, h3, bishop h5, knight f1, all very logical <clears throat> from both sides. And in this position, Wei Yi played knight d7. Uh, and I mentioned this is a very typical maneuver in these types of position. The idea is <clears throat> to prepare uh, to trade the bishop on e7, which is 
a somewhat passive piece which doesn't have much in the way of prospects. For the bishop on c1, which on the other hand is quite a nice piece and white uh, generally uh, values it <clears throat> a great deal. And let's say if white goes knight g3, which is uh, the most obvious way to proceed here, black takes, takes, and there's a choice between playing bishop g5 immediately, which trades the, the bishop on c1, but also allows knight f5, which is maybe something black doesn't particularly want. So he can even include the move g6 first and only play bishop g5 on the next move. Both seem perfectly playable for black. Uh, in view of all that, Magnus played g4, uh, bishop g6, and knight g3. And here, uh, where he played knight g5, not bishop g5, which is also very, very logical. Uh, because white, f for this very brief moment, doesn't have the pawn on h3 under control, black is creating a very serious positional idea of, let's say, after king g2, taking on f3, and continuing uh, with his uh, declared plan of trading off uh, the bishop on e7 for the bishop on c1. Uh, the somewhat poor bishop on g6 means that even this position, uh, despite the glaring weakness of the f4 square, could be playable for white. But Magnus, after some thought, opted for a slightly different configuration where fewer pieces get exchanged, at least immediately. He took on g5, g5 with the bishop and played d4. Uh, at first glance, it would appear that, you know, white's position doesn't look attractive at all. There is this uh, hole on f4. Uh, you can't really make much progress against the bishop on g6. And uh, the fact that white has two pawns in the center against the pawn and a half, so to speak, is not really very keenly felt here. But uh, uh, on the other hand, his structure is very, very solid. The knight on d7 doesn't have immediate like, active, uh, active uh, squares to, to aim for. It will take black a lot of time, something like rook e8 followed by knight f8, knight e6, and knight f4, to even uh, dream about uh, placing the knight from d7 on the, on the fantastic square on f4. And uh, because of that, I guess the position is uh, perfectly playable for white, although uh, I certainly do not believe that white is better here. Bishop f4, you could maybe make an argument for putting it on f6, but I think... Uh, if you're playing this position with black, you feel that the idea of at some point playing f6 and bishop f7 uh, is an important one and you don't really want to give up on it so easily by placing a bishop in front in front of the f pawn. Bishop f4 therefore is quite natural, queen, sorry, knight e2, queen f6, king g2, and this is perhaps where uh, the Chinese player started uh, going a bit wrong because uh, he went for a line which allowed him to, to simplify straight away, but it also allowed Magnus an easier way, uh, an easier way out, so to speak, out of his corner. Uh, during the live broadcast, we were quite interested in the move h5, in particular, uh, because it stops the uh, sort of the plan that Magnus uh, implemented in the game. Knight of four, queen of four, and queen to two. Black can take on g4, and in this position, black can take on h3, takes an e4, and uh, the pawn on the four will get will get recaptured, but black also gets a lot of counterplay uh, against the white center. This probably is completely fine for black. And there was another move which I was uh, quite seriously advocating during the stream. I thought rook fe8 is a very useful uh, useful move to make. By playing rook e8, you do create a very serious idea of e takes d4, because then uh, you will have a lot of pressure against the white center. And it probably forces white to do something like knight f4, queen f4, and in this position either queen c1 or queen d2. Let's say queen d2, we take on d2. And for instance, takes, takes, and d5, uh, which I think should lead to positions which are very comfortable for black. White plays something like f3, I think, if he wants to continue fighting. And then, uh, for instance, even knight f8, followed by rook d8, knight e6. And uh, this is a type of structure, the bishop on G2, from g6 will eventually get evacuated by f6, bishop f7. This is a type of structure, as Jan correctly said during the broadcast, you normally see from uh, Karl's Bads and the Queen's Gambit uh, decline type positions where uh, white uh, often will spend a lot of time and energy uh, pushing the pawn from e3 to e4, only to realize that the pawns on, e6 and, on c6 and f6 uh, form a very useful barrier, and the pawns on e4 and d4 uh, more than anything a target for attack. So uh, I think rook f8 was uh, a better option than the immediate e takes d4 that way he uh, decided to play. Knight takes d4, rook e8, knight f4, queen f4, and here Magnus uh, played a move uh, f3, which is uh, quite understandable because I guess he didn't want to calculate the position after 
uh, queen c1 because here black has this option of taking on e4 twice and supporting the rook with g5. And uh, the computer likes this for white to a certain degree, but I guess Magnus felt that it's completely unnecessary to give uh, way e concrete variations to calculate. And instead he played f3, only playing queen c1 on the next move. And this is where uh, the position uh, suddenly started sharpening up, although you, you wouldn't uh, actually guess it from, uh, from here. Uh, Wei Yi, after some thought, played d6, d5 here, which is a very logical move, but it also allows White to get the majority on the king's side. I was uh, making a case during the live broadcast for uh, starting with f6, but I guess after bishop b3 check, bishop f7, bishop f7, king f7, both uh, c3, c4, and maybe even uh, the immediate knight f5 at some point, perhaps uh, perhaps maybe in this position. Uh, white still will retain some pressure. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is uh, objectively stronger than the, the, the move chosen by Wei Yi, but it was definitely an option specifically, uh, I think, aimed uh, at avoiding the type of structure that Wei Yi uh, got in the game. e5, knight d7, f4, bishop c2, rook c2. It doesn't really look like much right now, but it's a lot easier to play positions like this with white. Uh, white has a very clear, a clear plan of uh, continuing to improve on the king side. Knight f5, knight d6 in many positions will become uh, a serious problem for black because it will be awkward to deal with that knight. And the plan that uh, Wei Yi went for, it looks very natural, but it led to the game, and once again, it's very difficult to imagine how this can be, but the game actually finished uh, uh, within the next uh, <clears throat> uh, within the next seven moves, yeah. and uh, that's a, a very very dramatic conclusion uh, in a position where uh, you don't really feel like black is losing. Uh, black is lacking somewhat in space, and it's quite clear that white's it a lot more comfortable. But uh, it's not that easy to imagine how you lose this position in in seven moves. And uh, I'm sorry for the spoilers. Knight c5, rook e3. Uh, as usual with Magnus, he is in no hurry to make any concrete uh, advances on the king side, meanwhile improving the position of his pieces uh, gradually. And also I think maybe he was laying a little bit of a trap, because if you play knight e6 here, white normally just plays f5, either immediately or maybe you can continue improving your position for the time being. And then you will play f5 and knight takes d4, c3, c takes d4 will lead to positions where white clearly is uh, a, a lot better because his structure is just so superior. Uh, and therefore the knight from c5 uh, kind of wants to go somewhere and it went to e4. Once again it feels logical because uh, uh, you put this knight in the way of the white pieces, make the f4, f5 move a lot harder to make and so on and so forth. And I think Wei Yi did not really think that he was placing his game uh, in, uh, in any kind of uh, jeopardy. But Magnus played b4 in reply and Suddenly here you begin realizing just how dangerous this position could become. If white is allowed to play c3, c4 and then take on g5, the knight on e4 has no squares and therefore black will be forced to recapture with the c-pawn, uh, giving up on the c-file which probably will immediately get occupied by the white rooks and also completely uh, ruining his structure in the center. The d5-pawn will become very, very weak. And in general, if you imagine the same position without the, c the c3 and c6-pawns, it becomes instantly obvious that white is uh, much, much better. And this already uh, required uh, immediate answers. And uh, uh, increasing Wei Yi's problems was the fact that he was, by that point, in, in severe time trouble. And uh, his decision to play g5 is very understandable from a human perspective. But as a matter of fact, I think the only way to uh, continue and have some chances of uh, defending this successfully was to play f6 and allow white to establish uh, a protected pass pawn on e6. But the king probably gets to e7 here. Uh, you start by uh, rook c8 so as not to blunder, uh, blunder the fork. Although maybe white doesn't even want to win this exchange, it's, it's unclear if it's that good. But you probably don't want to, uh, to give white this opportunity. So you play rook c8, then you play king f8, king e7, uh, or perhaps uh, you do it in this position. And uh, it's not going to be that easy for white to break this down because uh, c4 is now a lot harder to realize and h4, g5 doesn't actually win uh, a lot on the king's side. But g5 is a, lot, is a lot more human because you want to undermine the white structure first. Uh, Magnus still plays c4 and 
here once again, uh, being severely short on time, uh, Wei Yi uh, decided to calculate his way out of uh, out of the difficulties that he is facing, and he played c6, c5, which is just instantly losing to a somewhat counterintuitive move. Instead of this, I think Black probably needed to once again bite the bullet and take on a four, play f6, e6, and something like knight g5. If Black could take on c4 next move, his position probably would be tolerable, but White plays c5, and this is quite horrible for Black, but at least the game continues, because in uh, after c5, White needed to find one last precise move, and, and the black position completely collapses because the knight on e4 simply has no squares. Wei Yi, I guess, was counting on knight f5, takes on f4, takes on b4, and after cd5, knight c3, there is no stopping the fork on d5, and therefore White has to sacrifice this exchange, and probably he is better even here. I'm quite, I'm quite sure that even this position is quite pleasant for White. But the game certainly will continue, and Black can definitely fight here. Uh, the position is not that clear. Uh, but Magnus uh, really doesn't miss tactical uh, tactical nuances a lot, and in this position he immediately spotted that by playing uh, a move uh, knight b5, which looks a bit weird because you really want it on f5. f5 is such a beautiful square. But controlling c3 is a lot more important, and knight b5 just wins on the spot, because in all the same variations the knight on e4 will really have no squares. Wei Yi had taken on f4, king takes f4, cb4, cd5, uh, and he uh, resigned uh, in this position because now rook takes d5, knight c7 loses. Uh, during the game I thought this loses a full, a full rook, but actually black can uh, end up only a full piece down, but there's really uh, no need to continue analyzing from here. And if black plays knight c3, white just takes, takes, and the easiest is to play king e4, and we get exactly the same position we were discussing, but only white did not have to sacrifice an exchange to get it. The pawn on c3 falls, white has a more active king, an extra pawn, and the pawns on e5 and d5, which cannot be challenged by any of black's pieces. So the, the resignation of Wei Yi on move 33 here was already completely justified. And you have to say that uh, the, the, the rapid decline of Wei Yi's position from uh, a position on move 18 where it feels like there's really nothing wrong with uh, what he's been doing so far, and his position looks perfectly fine. Uh, it's very, very difficult to recognize uh, this position uh, uh, when you look at this. Uh, very, very uh, drastic decline in fortunes there. And uh, once again, a very uh, efficient and a very uh, nicely played game by Magnus Carlsen, who is now on three out of four. Uh, meanwhile, Pavel, Pavel Ilyanov won yet another game in round four. He is uh, leading the field by half a point, won three and a half out of four, with a very nice technical victory over Adiban, who I feel uh, just didn't believe he could lose that game, and he continued playing somewhat inaccurately, uh, and eventually drifted into a position which you could definitely lose, and which he did lose. And uh, also on three out of four, together with Magnus, is Wesley So, who has beaten uh, Luke Van Veli with black. Tomorrow is uh, a rest day in Waikanzea, and we will be back with the coverage of uh, Tata Steel Waikanzea 2017 on Thursday, uh, the uh, 19th of December. Uh, stay tuned until then. This has been Peter Swidler for Chess24.